Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. You know, in the German language we have a saying that translates to why make it simple if I can complicate it? Which basically means in a sarcastic way, why the frog did I not think of this earlier? A few months ago I've released a video on how to change a CSV delimiter in Power Automate. The default delimiter in Power Automate is the comma, but sometimes you need another one, depending on your data or maybe the default regional settings. What I've totally overlooked was the fact that if there is a comma or some other special characters within the values, then my old version ran into some troubles and did not work. One of my subscribers brought that to my attention and luckily I found a way better way to do it. It's quicker, less complicated and more reliable than the old version. I always love to get better and this was a small revelation to me. So let's dive right into it, I've already talked way too much. I have a SharePoint list with some fictional products and as you can see here, I've included some special characters. The plan is to use Power Automate to generate a CSV output, change the standard delimiter and save this as a file into a document library. Let's go to Power Automate and create a new flow. First, I will create two variables. In the old flow, I've used three. You don't have to create them, but it will make the understanding process a little bit easier and flexible. The first one I will call old delimiter. It's going to be a string value and it's going to be a, simply a comma. Now I can just copy this action. The second one will be new delimiter. It's also string. And in that case, I will just use a pipe as the value. The third action is from SharePoint and get items. I'll just insert the site address and the list name. And I will just insert something at top count so PowerTomat doesn't complain. The next action is a create CSV table action. In the from field, I use the array from the previous output. I'll show all the advanced parameters. Here at columns, I use custom. In here, I can define all the headers and the values that I need for my CSV file. Let's go back. I want to have the title, price, brand, and the item type. Title, brand, price, and item type. And in all the values, I will use a function. It's the encode URI component function. In the brackets, I use the dynamic content. I click here on see more and I choose the title, add. I repeat this for each value. Because item type is an option field, use here the value. So what does this do? This function will transform the text value of the special characters into a URL encoded format. A blank space will become percent %20 and a comma will become percent %2c and so on. As a side note, if you have any special characters in your column name, I would strongly recommend to use that function also in the column headers, because otherwise it can cause some problems. I will do it here with the item type. And I'll enter here in single quotes, item, comma, type, just to demonstrate how it works. Then let's go to the next action. Now I will use the compose action and use another function in it. I'll type in replace, and the first parameter will be the output of the previous action from create CSV table. The second parameter is the old delimiter, so it, it's looking for the old one and it should replace it with the new delimiter. I'll press on add. 
And now I'll add another compose action. This one will be the decode URI component. And again, it's the output from the previous action. That will transform all the URL encoded characters to the original form. You could also combine the replace and decode URI component functions in one compose action. It's just easier to show it here in separate actions. Then just be careful of the order in which you're doing which function. And finally, I use the SharePoint create file action to create the file in the SharePoint library. I'll select again the site address, the folder path, So for the file name, I'll just use the current date and time. And the file content is the output of the previous action. Let's save and test it. And it worked. Let's go through it. I have to get items first that will generate the array. Then it creates a CSV table with the encoded characters. You can see that here. The first replace will simply replace the comma with the pipe in that case. And the second compose action will turn everything back to normal characters. And then it creates the file. So that was it. And I hope you found this helpful. And I just wish you a great day.